Hey friends, it is time for another weekly garden tour. This week I have my hod that Chris actually made me, he made me this for my birthday and it has a little Sunshine Farm logo on it. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and harvest just a few things to harvest that I'm pretty excited about. And yeah, welcome to the garden. It is doing so well. It never rains Hi. in California. Hi. The sun is always shining bright. People are smiling, making plans, hiding behind their shades, and you're doing the same. Despite all the slug issues of the past couple months, we are experiencing a lot of growth and a lot of potential for what's to come. Let's start over at the berms and swales. We have some exciting things going on in there and I don't have anything to harvest the art there quite yet, not for a while, but we'll go take a look at what's growing and then we'll kind of make our way through the beds and I'll give you some updates on how things, how things are doing. I've got eight berms and one husband <laughs> he's helping to weed and water some of these berms i've already worked on the melons and the onions today and he's working on weeding and watering the sweet potatoes and the beans let me just quickly give you an update on how how those things are doing got some watermelon in here some onions that are doing really well um, over here is the cantaloupe, sweet potatoes, which are all leafed out now. I told you guys they would look a lot better. There's another row behind us. Obviously tons of weeds. This is a, these are first year beds, so a lot of the weeds are coming from just the native soil under the surface. And then we have our beans, which have germinated really nicely. Green bush beans, soybean, and dry bush beans. So this past week we've discovered a new, very unfortunate, potentially serious pest issue in our gardens. And it has to do with the family of plants called alliums. So onions, garlic, leeks, shallots, um, chives, all of those beautiful plants. And even Egyptian walking onions, which are my one of my favorite perennials these onions right here. So all of my onions and my Egyptian walking onions, my shallots and my garlic have been affected by the leek moth. And this moth is no joke when it comes to your alliums. They can damage your crops so fast and it can be really easy to miss if you're not paying attention. So somebody posted actually in the plant-based homesteaders and hobby farmers Facebook group, um, which I always link in my videos if you, if you want to join it. Someone posted about noticing the leek moth damage in their garden. And I honestly had never been concerned about garlic or onions at all. I just assumed that these, that they're pest deterrents and they're pest free. I've just had such success with them. So I didn't even think that it could be a possibility in our garden. And I was wrong, and I'm super bummed that I was wrong, but I was. So let's just take a look. I'm over here in the garlic bed. We have lots of beautiful garlic, but this garlic has been affected by the leek moth. And luckily I caught it pretty quick and was able to save a lot of my garlic scapes, which we're going to harvest today. But there is some damage. I did lose a handful of scapes and I don't know how bad the damage is gonna be this year in terms of our, our garlic crop. That right there is a sign of it. So what you'll notice with the leek moth is oftentimes damage on the garlic scapes first if you have a hard neck garlic growing and it will look like kind of a sandy residue on the scape and you'll quickly realize that the scape is damaged. They can damage the entire scape to the point where it's no longer salvageable and they can actually do the same with your entire garlic crop. 
they lay their eggs on the leaves of alliums and then the larvae hatch and make their way into the leaves and they continue to reproduce until they've made their way all the way into the bulb of the plant in which case it can rot and be either not um, salvageable at all or it can have poor storage quality so go out in your gardens if you have garlic if you have onions and just take a look especially if you're in the northeast like we are up in upstate new york apparently it's really new to this region and it's really devastating because alliums are supposed to be the you know impenetrable crop that you don't have to worry about and now i'm going to have to face this battle every year if you do see it try to remove the most damaged leaves the most damaged part of the plant and go ahead and get yourself some bt which is a natural organic bacteria that will kill larvae that eat the leaves and you really have to use bt or else you're going to potentially risk the larvae eating through all, your entire crop there really is no way of managing the problem other than removing the affected leaves using BT to stop the reproduction cycle or using row cover as a prevention. It's too late for row cover. I had no idea I was going to have this issue. We did not have this issue last year, but I am going to be starting to use a lot more row cover in our future and in our gardens. So it looks like we're gonna have row cover on garlic and onions going forward. Anywho, it happens pests come out of nowhere they come over from europe apparently and they cause ruckus and you just have to learn to adapt to them as best as possible i was pretty devastated when i saw the damage but i've like kind of bounced back and i'm feeling better and more relieved and grateful that i caught it early we'll see we'll see how how the onions do this year so anyways that's one of the major updates in the garden is the allium the allium update let me grab my hot. I, I left it somewhere. <laughs> Let me go find it. Okay, so we've got our broccoli and cauliflower in here. We actually have some small broccoli heads that I need to harvest, even though they're super tiny because they are getting ready to bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off. And same with this right here. I have a cheddar cauliflower that even though it's really little, I need to cut it because it's gonna bolt. A little cauliflower head and some little broccoli in there so I'm going to harvest um, a bunch of garlic scapes while we're out here some more of that damage here see that sandy residue dang leek moths I did already spray everything with BT so there's not much more I can do other than just go ahead and, and harvest some scapes so let me go harvest some scapes real quick Nothing's growing where your heart is fire But baby, I bet you're cold without me Even when it's 90 degrees Without me, I bet that you can get it asleep In that bed, lying awake Cause I'm not there beside you Keeping you warm and I know I bet you're cold So we got a big handful of garlic scapes I'm gonna go ahead and go put those in the in the hod. I talked about garlic scapes in my last garden tour, but if you didn't have a chance to watch that yet, go ahead and, and check that one out because I talked more about what they are, what you can use them for, and I'm actually going to be turning this into a garlic scape pesto. The recipe is from one of my favorite seed companies, Fruition Seeds. So the other thing I need to harvest are actually some carrots that are bolting. These guys are gonna have tiny roots because I planted them too late in the fall and they just didn't have time to grow. So they're gonna have little itty bitty roots, but um, we'll see what we can use them for. 
I might just like use them for juice or something. So we have a bunch of carrots in this bed. I'm going to harvest all of these guys right now. Yeah, little itty bitty roots for sure. all empty so I'm gonna fill this with maybe some melon cucumbers and a couple butternut squash oh also I was weeding earlier and I went to pull out a weed guess what I found not a weed friends that is a beet so sometimes you plant something one season and it doesn't do anything and then you pull it up nine months later and you have a vegetable so i'm gonna go ahead and put that in the basket i'm not fitting the carrots in here because there's way too many but let's go i have another area full of carrots hopefully these ones have slightly better roots on them but i don't think the chances are very good so the carrots over here same deal planted them in the fall too late and they're producing their roots now but instead of producing nice strong roots they're putting their energy towards flowering which happens in a carrot second year so I have all these bolting carrots which will be beautiful flowers but I want to pull them before they bolt because that's when the carrot will become really bitter so yeah you can see right here is where the flower is about to about to be I made a known man Story. He took out a notepad and wrote something for me. I'm gonna be the first to admit that those carrots, all of them, were really pathetic. That's okay. Sometimes carrots can be really tricky to grow. And I tried starting some this spring. But none of them germinated. I don't know what the issue was this time, but I'm going to try a different germination method that I saw over at Roots and Refuge using a, uh, sorry, I'm super out of breath from doing that, a two by four um, on top of the soil after it's been planted and then just keeping an eye on it and removing it as soon as the carrots are germinated. So I'll plant some more as soon as our temperatures aren't in the 80s. Next week we're supposed to have a bunch of 80 degree temps and carrots don't germinate well in 80 degree temperatures so we'll see we'll see if we have carrots this year I'm hoping we have a nice fall crop but I need to get that going in the not too far away future the ironic thing about fall gardening is you don't just plant stuff in the fall and get it in the fall you actually plant stuff in the summer and you get it in the fall whereas with your summer crops you plant them in the spring and you get them in the summer Pregnancy makes you really out of breath, even from something as simple as pulling a few carrots. The other thing I wanted to harvest was some chamomile from the herb garden. So let's head over, head over to the herb garden. A couple updates in this bed. We planted some pineapple sage that I purchased as a start. Um, planted an oregano over there that I actually let die, but hopefully it will come back. And planted a lemon thyme right over there. So this chamomile can go ahead and get harvested. So let me let me cut some of that or I'll just pinch it. Scratch that idea because it's easier just to like pull the buds off into like a little jar instead of pulling all the stems or cutting all the stems. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that be for now. But the yarrow is almost in bloom. This is yarrow. It's a medicinal herb. It actually grows wild in this area, but I wanted to make sure to add it to my herb garden and tea garden. So I started some last year from seed and planted it in here and it's just gone crazy. I have another little plant right over there behind the chamomile. 
And my lavender is doing really well too. It was planted last year. It's coming back, this one especially, and that one. This one is alive, but not doing super hot. Still got the foxglove in bloom. They're so pretty, and they last a while. Another thing I need to harvest right now is a bunch of strawberries. Tons of little strawberries. So our strawberry bed is a total mess, but it's producing a lot. We planted like a few, maybe five or six strawberry plants in our first big garden, which was two years ago. And this was when we tilled the garden and we totally regretted that decision. But because we tilled it, it led to just crazy weeds and we haven't controlled it well. So now we just have like a strawberry bed with tons of weeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of these strawberries. You can see in here all of the little red. These guys, so another little berry there. Lots of little berries to be picked. He kept walking on down the road. I harvested the strawberries and I found a beautiful one to eat. Bogus. Ooh, there it is. Strawberry. So most of them are super, super tiny, but found a nice, good sized one to snack on. So good. So good. Strawberries from the garden are so much better than strawberries from the store. No surprise. Looks good. Thank you. So I pretty much harvested everything, everything that I really wanted to. It's actually quite, quite heavy. I've got my tiny little broccoli and cauliflower heads, garlic scapes, a single beet that I don't remember planting, and a lot of strawberries. I don't think there's really anything else I can harvest. I didn't plant radishes yet this year. Whoops. Whew, I'm wiped. There's a couple more things I wanted to show you guys in the beds. Let's head on over to the tomatoes and peppers where we have some good stuff going on. Oh, and I wanted to update you guys on the slug issue. My strategy of planting the cucumbers in the pot has been effective. There are no slugs in the cucumbers that I planted in the little pots with the bottoms cut out and they've all germinated. So let me show you guys those real quick. You can see all of them germinated. So I've got two in each pot. I'll probably thin them out to one. I might try one or two pots with two in each pot just to see if it's a possibility. I have my lone survivor squash that I had put the pot around. So this is a bottomless pot that I had like wrapped around here, but now I've taken it away because it's big enough and I haven't seen any slugs over here. So let's do a quick update on tomato, pepper, eggplant, potato alley, AKA nightshade alley. The peppers are doing well, not awesome, but we've had some really cold days. Like today was in the 60s, yesterday was in like the 50s. But the tomatoes are doing amazing. And today I actually went and um, tied them all up and did another little pruning on them. So they're all either single vines or some are two vines. There's my tomatoes. They're looking lovely. Lots of little flowers, flowers on them. Lots of flowers. And they're just really, really healthy and happy. And then my peppers are still pretty small, but last year it took a while for them to grow, but I do have a lot of fruit on them already. So little bells there. They're growing. They're just, they're just slow growing, but they are starting to branch out more. Quick update on the trellises. I'm standing under one right now. The slugs pretty much got to every single seedling except for two. And I did notice some beans had recovered. So we have some beans as well. But every other seedling they got to. So what I did was I started some squash indoors in little grow bags. I'll show you guys those in a minute. 
and I'm just waiting getting them hardened off right now and then I'm gonna go ahead and plant those in the ground without taking them out of the grow bags at all just planting them right in the ground so that I don't disturb their roots and we'll see how it goes it's not my favorite method of planting squash but it's better than no squash at all and I had to do something because the slugs were eating all my seeds although I've noticed the slugs have gone away almost entirely since we've had warmer weather and drier weather. So I did go ahead and plant some zucchini, zucchini seeds in the ground and we'll see, we'll see if those survive. We will see. I did notice my brassicas have recovered a lot from the slugs. So as you can see here, I have Brussels sprouts and they're still alive and that back one was almost completely decimated by slugs and it, they're making a comeback. My corn also germinated. I had some spotty germination so I actually went in and filled in some of the spots today with some new corn. We'll see if it has enough time to grow. It looks like this ground cherry fell. This is not my first ground cherry of the season. I've had some, but they're so good. I love them so much. Oh, I love ground cherries. They're so citrusy and pineapple-y. And the brassicas over here are recovering just fine from the slugs as well. And we got our fava beans that are throwing off blossoms like crazy. They're cool little blossoms. So those develop into the little beans. And star of the show. My artichoke that just gets bigger and bigger every single every single day, which I mean they all get bigger every day, but the artichoke is just huge. It's my hand guys. It's like already three feet in all directions. Just waiting to see when it starts to send off flower shoots. It's gonna be so fun to have fresh artichokes. As you can see, things are looking a lot more alive than they were last week. Except for the hookah culture bed, it looks rather sad. The hookah culture bed looks so sad because I, well, as you know, I just pulled out all those carrots that were in the middle and I cut back all of the kale or almost all of the kale because it was just going crazy and I'm, I'm going to fill in those spaces with some winter and summer squash as well as some melons and some cucumbers. So mostly filling it in with cucurbits. Let's go over to the raised beds to see if there's anything, anything new to show you guys. Still have a raspberry jungle. Got the peppers in here. They're doing okay. I'm doing just fine. See them in there. Some sweet potatoes. Dahlia's coming up. A poppy and zinnia. And I did plant some beans in here, so you'll see there's a couple beans coming up. Oh, it does look like we're still having some slug issues in this bed because that's been eaten. More garlic, and this garlic has also been affected by the leek moth. So I also sprayed this garlic with BT. Actually, this garlic uh, is much worse, I think, overall. You can see the damage on that. I cut back the chive plant so that the other herbs could fill out, and they already have quite a bit. You can see the beautiful sage flowers. They've opened up, got some parsley and cilantro, some chamomile over there, and some dill, dill popping up everywhere. The hardy kiwi's growing in nicely and it's starting to wrap itself right around the trellis, which is super cool to see. And then we have my cucumbers that have sprouted. So these guys are pickling cucumbers. In each one, I've got some pickling cucumbers. So 
I'll just wait for these guys to get their their first true leaves, and then I'll then I'll thin them out. So just they'll just be two two in each pot. This is exhausting, friends. Garden tours while pregnant are not as easy as they may look. Quick stroll past the garden just so you can see everything that's going on. Nothing's growing where your heart is fire, but baby, I bet you're cold without me, even when it's 90 degrees. Without me, I bet that you can get it asleep in that bed, lying awake, cause I'm not there beside you. There's a quick garden tour for you. I'll see you guys next week in the garden tour. Bye friends. The sun is always shining right.